As this episode begins, one of Celestia's guards enters and says that It has returned. Well, let's see, from the title of the episode, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that It is the Crystal Empire, and from Celestia's reaction, that could potentially be very bad. We cut to Twilight, who's been told that Celestia wants to give her a test of some kind, and naturally she assumes it's a standard academic test, but it's actually more of a saving the world kind of test. We learn that a thousand years ago, the Crystal Empire was taken over by an evil tyrant named King Sombra. He was eventually defeated and turned into the smoke monster from Lost, but before he could be sealed away, he put a curse on the Empire, making it vanish forever. And now it's back. That's why everyone was freaking out earlier, because if the Crystal Empire is returned, there's a good chance that Sombra's back too. Twilight's job will be to assist Cadence and Shining Armor in protecting the Empire. The other main five will be there too, because Celestia can't do shit since they took over the Elements of Harmony, but ultimately, it must be Twilight who protects the Empire. That will be her test. Outside, Spike asks Twilight how it went, and she breaks into song for no reason. Now, as usual, I have to give credit to the performers and Daniel Ingram for his composition, but otherwise, this song does nothing to help advance the story or give us any new information. All we get here is Twilight saying that she wasn't prepared for this kind of test. Well, no shit! I'm pretty sure we could have figured that out from the previous scenes. And then Spike starts singing. Oh. Uh... Oh, why? He doesn't add anything to this either, except for repeating what Twilight says. And it's actually kind of creepy, because the whole point of the song is Twilight answering his question. And she's answering him negatively, but he keeps getting really happy about it. This is the exact opposite of how he should be reacting. I really don't know what else to say about this. But anyway, once we finally get past that time-wasting bullfuck, the main six all head to the Crystal Empire, escorted by Shining Armor. An encounter with King Smoke Monster leaves several dark crystal shards embedded in his horn, inhibiting his magic. We learn that the Empire gets its power from love, happiness, pixie dust, and puppy farts, which means right now Cadence's magic is the only thing protecting them, and she isn't looking all that great. Neither are the Crystal Ponies. Those are the citizens of the Crystal Empire. Apparently, they've all been suspended in time for the past thousand years, and most of them can't even remember who they are. Twilight finally makes some progress after visiting the library, her natural habitat, and finds out that the Crystal Empire has a tradition of holding a festival to keep its citizens happy, and thus naturally boosting its own defensive magic. We get another song as the girls all help prepare for the fair, and I really think this song is much more effective than the first one as it actually functions to help move the action along and explain some of the things that we'll see later in the episode. Things start to get underway, and at first it seems pretty successful. The crystal ponies all cheer up, and when they do, they take on this really neat-looking glowy crystally effect. It also brings their memories back, and unfortunately, this reveals another obstacle in their plan. It turns out that for all the good mojo protective energy to work, it has to be fed into the crystal heart at the center of the event. Twilight had assumed it was just for decoration, so she rigged up a fake one as a stand-in. Now finding out that it's a real magic artifact that Sombra hid away somewhere, the other main five keep the fair going while Twilight goes to find the real crystal heart. And what I say about Rainbow Dash, accidentally adorable. I mean, here she is being a total jerk the whole time, and then all you do is show her eating some corn and BAM! Cute as a button! A hey, Rainbow Dash, how dare you? I- w w wait, what's this? Ah, my heart can't take it! This is the part I wasn't prepared for. The Crystal Heart is eventually revealed to be on display at the top of the castle, but to get there you have to uncover several hidden passageways with alternating light and dark magic and get past all kinds of traps along the way. Luckily, Twilight learned how to summon the devil after watching Celestia do it, so she's able to make it there just fine. But when she actually tries to take the Crystal Heart, Sombra traps her. She can't even teleport out. Fortunately, the Crystal Heart is thrown clear and is now within Spike's reach. He had already agreed not to interfere, but Cadence's magic is run out, which means Sombra is about to retake the Empire. And with no other option, Twilight tells Spike to bring the heart to Cadence. Oh, so that's what her cutie mark is supposed to be. Okay, I get it now. Hey guys, I get it. And so, the day is saved. Free Crystal Pepsi for everyone! But after failing to meet the conditions of her test, Twilight returns to Canterlot preparing to face her worst fear. Yes, worse than Magic Kindergarten. The possibility that Celestia might reject her as a student forever. But as we've seen before, Celestia often knows more about these things than she lets on. And while I'm sure it would have been great if Twilight had saved the day this time, given the situation she was in, she still made the right choice, putting the needs of others ahead of her own. And because of that, she did pass, and she will be moving on, and oh god, it's that song again from the beginning! Why?! And meanwhile, Luna's there, and she gives Twilight a serious look, and she pulls out a book at the end, and what does it all mean?! Is it setting up something really big for later? I don't even know, because I'm too distracted by this loud, pointless, stupid- Okay, I know it's blasphemous to say anything bad about the music, but that opening song here, I'm sorry, but I'm just not feeling it. 
bit. But overall, how did the season premiere do? Well, for starters, I really like how Cadence, Shining Armor, and Luna get involved with the story right from the beginning. These are three characters who deserve more screen time, and the episode does not disappoint. There are some really good character interactions, especially between Applejack and Rarity, like, hey, you must be tired because you've been running through my mind all day long. Oh, are you from Tennessee? Because you're the only 10 I see. Seriously, it's nice to see how far they've come since Look Before You Sleep. We also get some really interesting new displays of magic. See, I told you you could levitate yourself. And the crystal ponies just look cool when they're all powered up in their super crystal saiyan forms. And like I said, the songs are good, even though the first one feels kind of clunky with the way it's actually used in the episode. As for the main story, I thought the Crystal Empire and King Sombra all sounded really interesting in theory. The problem is they didn't really do anything with a lot of these concepts. Most of the time spent in the Empire feels very mundane, with a large part dedicated to the Crystal Fair. And let's be honest, it just comes across as a less interesting version of a Renaissance Fair, in the sense that it just reminded me how much more fun I'd be having at an actual Renaissance Fair right now. Plus, as much as I hate to say it, King Sombra is completely wasted here. Now, I've heard that he was set up to be more of an ominous presence in the background, but the problem is that by giving out his entire backstory at the beginning, you're setting him up as a character. As a joke earlier, I compared Sombra to the smoke monster from Lost, but the truth is that Lost actually provides a good example of how to do this right. Part of the reason the smoke monster works as an ominous presence is because you don't find out what it is until much later on. And surprise, surprise, when that happens, it stops being an ominous presence and starts being a character. And since we already know who King Sombra is, it's really confusing that he only shows up for a couple of minutes to make everything look like the Michael Bay version of Cybertron and go, Bruh, I'm Big Scary Monster Guy. And that might have been good for a few laughs, but I swear I haven't seen a single person who actually takes him seriously as a villain. But thankfully, there is still some feeling of a big adventure going on here, and the episode ends on a strong note with Spike being honored at the palace for once, and we get some potential story elements being set up for later. And with all that in mind, the episode is good, but ultimately it feels surprisingly average, and it is the weakest season opener by far. The Crystal Empire gets a 7 out of 10.